First off, I want to start off by thanking my opponent, and then I also want to thank the judge for judging it, as well as the audience members for viewing this and making this possible. So first I want to begin with harms number one. Synthetic fertilizer leads to global warming. Anthropogenic warming is a consensus of the scientific community, Hansen, 2012. The threat of human-made climate change and the urgency of reducing fossil fuel emissions have become increasingly clear to the scientific community. Science, as described in numerous authoritative reports, has uh, revealed that hu humanity is now the dominant force driving changes of Earth's atmospheric composition, and thus future climate. The climate system's inertia causes climate to respond slowly, but in a very long-lasting way to this human-made forcing. Failure to phase out emissions rapidly will leave young people and future generations with an enormous cleanup job. And synthetic fertilizer increases nitrous oxide, which is directly linked to global warming, Sanders 2012. Samples show a long-term trend in isotopic composition that confirms that nitrogen-based fertilizer is largely responsible for the 20% increase in atmospheric nitrous oxide since the Industrial Revolution. Now, our study shows empirically that the nitri nitrogen isotope ratio is a fingerprint of fertilizer use. Nitrous oxide destroys strat uh, stratospheric ozone, which is a steep ramp up in atmospheric nitrous oxide, coincided when inexpensive synthetic fertilizer and other developments boosted food production. And synthetic fertilizer leads to global warming, multiple internal links, shall 2011. Synthetic or inorganic fertilizers have drastic side effects in the long run. Using too much of these fertilizers in the soil leads to eutrophication. These substances prove to become toxic for the aquatic life, thereby increasing the ex excessive growth of algae in the water bodies and decreasing the levels of oxygen. 50% of the lakes in the United States are eutrophic. Now, fertilizer consists of carbon dioxide, ammonia, and nitrogen, the emission of which has con contributed to a great extent in the quantity of greenhouse gases present in the environment. Nitrous oxide is the third most significant greenhouse gas. And warming causes extinction. Tickle 2008. Global warming on this scale would mean the end of living and the beginning of survival. All the world's coastal plains would be lost, complete with ports, cities, transport, and industrial infrastructure, and much of the world's most productive farmland. Billions would die. Warming caused by human emissions could propel us towards a hothouse earth. Now, observation two, inherency. U.S. farmers use more fertilizer rather than switching to, to being sustainable. Gris 2010. In 1960, farmers in developed and developing countries applied 10 million metric tons of nitro nitrogen fertilizer. In 2005, they applied 100 million metric tons. Modern agriculture, agriculture depends on cheap nitrogen fertilizer. There, uh, there's not much incentive currently to cut back. Farmers get paid by the ton. Many farmers use fertilizer as a form of insurance. Better to apply a little too much and get high yields than apply too little and risk yield and profit declines. Now, our plan for today. Uh, our plan is that farms will be issued EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, grants given that the farm under the United States federal government def definition of being sustainable, namely the elimination of synthetic fertilizer use in favor of more sustainable farming techniques, including but not limited to legume cover crops and biochar. Our funding is $10 million through normal means. Our agency is through Congress. Our timeline is immediately. And our enforcement is through the Environmental Protection Agency. Now I want to move on to our solvency. Solvency number one, the EPA. EPA grants empirically reduce the use of hazardous farming chemicals. Grants will create change, EPA. Commission growers reduce total acres treated with high-risk pesticides by 55% and 72%, nearly eliminated diazonic chlorpharias. The Sonoma County Grape Growers Association cut use of nine, uh, nine high-risk pesticides by 32%. Now, California almond growers use 77% less organic phosphate pesticides. The Dairy Manure, manure Collaborative uh, has goals including dairy feeding operations, use of manure as a resource, improve soil quality, quality, pr uh, provide nutrients for crops, generate renewable energy, create jobs, and reduce contamination of air and water. And transition from synthetic will be easy. Cornell University 2005. Organic farming offers real advantages. Organic farming not only uses an average of 30% less fossil fossil energy, but also conserve more water, induce less erosion, maintains uh, soil quality, and conserve more uh, resources than conventional farming does. The study compared a conventional farm with an organic animal-based farm and an uh, organic legume-based farm. Now, in this results, over time, the organic systems produced higher yields, especially under drought conditions. Erosion degraded the soil on the conventional farm, while the soil on the organic farms steadily improved. Organic agricultural systems has implications for global warming. Soil carbon in the organic systems increased by 15 to 28 percent. Now, corn yields in the legume-based farms were 22 percent higher than yields in the conventional systems. 
Now, and sustainable farming techniques massively reduces greenhouse gas emissions while utilizing carbon sequestration. Cruz, 2004. Compared to the combined greenhouse gas output associated with fertilizer based and legume based crop cropping systems, in their study, the conventional agro, agro ecosystem had a net uh, had a net output of 114 for uh, greenhouse gas. The legume based tilled cropping system uh, 41 and no till fertilized agricultural ecosystem as 14. In the long run, the legume based system will have the lowest global warming potential out of out of all the potentials. Thank you. All right, so uh, let's go to your second card saying that synthetic fertilizer leads to global warming. Okay. Uh, what in particular does ozone depletion have to do with global warming? Um, well, ozone, as you know, maintains our CO2 in the ozone itself. So with the depletion of our ozone, it lets, lets it out. Uh, doesn't the ozone layer mainly have to do with the protection from ultraviolet rays from the sun? That, that is a significant part. Yes. Okay, thank you. Now let's uh, go on to your Shalu 11 card, also there in your harms. Okay. Uh, let's see. Can you actually go ahead and read a lot of the warrants you had in there why synthetic fertilizer leads to global warming? Yes, uh, it's because of the eutrophication. What is eutrophication? Eutrophication is uh, with the runoffs and uh, other of toxics and toxicities in soil that will lead into water supplies as well as other things and just like in our lakes as I described. Well, I understand why toxicity is bad, but how does that specifically lead to an increase in global uh, warming? Well, what it leads to is it leads to increase in algae and then when there's an increase in algae, there's not enough oxygen for the fish for which there's too much of it because it absorbs too much oxygen underneath the water so then the fish die and it, and it ruins the whole cycle. Okay. Also, uh, let's go on to your plan. Uh, so you're saying that you're going to be having $10 million in funding for uh, your plan, correct? That is correct. Uh, do you know how much funding currently exists in the SQUO for agricultural? Yes, it's uh, less than uh, 500000 500000 in, in total for the entire yeah. agricultural yeah. sector? To be exactly, it's about 200000 Not just the EPA, but the entire... The entire U.S. federal government funding? No, for this specific. Uh, Just for the EPA? No, it's for this specific for farms, what they have currently right now. It's only 200000 that they have currently. Okay. So we want to increase it to $10 million. Also, so how many, so out of this funding of $10 million, how many farms do you think you're actually going to be able to affect? A lot. Do you have a specific number for me? Actually, you know what? Time's up. Thank you. All right, I'd like to go ahead and thank my judge for being here, the audience for watching, and my opponent for giving me a good debate. Uh, I've got three off case, and then I'll be going on case. First off, state, state counter plan. The 50 states and all relevant U.S. territories should issue grants given that they farm under the USFG definition of being sustainable, namely the elimination of synthetic fertilizer use in favor of more sustainable farming techniques, including but not limited to legume cover crops and biochar. And state action gets modeled due to local innovation lash 07. America has a long tradition of policy innovation that is incubated at the state level. The states often take the front lines of cutting-edge policy development. The states have proved have provided that both the problem-solving acumen as well as the pressure to induce the federal government to act. And state self-agricultural policies bottom-up approach works best. Pennsylvania approves this with a fresh food financing initiative. Uh, uh, Lynn 2011. The support of the three states' representative first led to the $30, $30 million allocation from the state government to establish and run FFFI. Uh, as of June 2010, FFFI approved more than $73.2 million loans and $12.1 million of, of grants. The original $30 million of state seed money has generated projects totaling $190 million. FFFI has been widely recognized as a model and further facilitated a policy creation at the federal level. And now onto the federalism disadvantage. Federalism is high now, CATS 12. States have, have broad powers over such, over such market-shaping policy. States take on larger roles. States are, are building on their... Uh, uh, attributes and advantages. States innovate offer states state innovation offers a practical counterpoint to a Washington. And environmental policy is delegated now. The plan kills this federalist model. So we call 08. Other countries continue to model American style federalism. Germany, the Republic of Austria, Russian Federation, Spain, India, and Nigeria all have paid all based parts of their government structure on the American federalism, choosing to decentralize power by developing constitutions that are more federalist. The phenomenon of federalism affects the interests of the entire global community, and federalism is key to hegemony. 
uh, Rivlin 92, if the U.S. is to be an effective world leader, it cannot afford overlapping responsibilities between the federal government and the states. International concerns will continue threatening to crowd out domestic policy on the federal agenda. Effective domestic policy is essential to U.S. leadership in world affairs, and hegemony prevents multiple scenarios for nuclear war, Kagan 07. Were the U.S. to dimin diminish its influence, other nations would settle disputes through wars. Most of these powers possess nuclear weapons that would that make wars more catastrophic. Wars could erupt between China and Taiwan, Russia and Georgia, between India and Pakistan, or other Middle Eastern states. These draw in other powers. Now, on to my third off, Cap K. Capitalism has almost reached its end. Short-lived recoveries will go on until the final collapse, Re Ravier 10. We have been witnessing not merely a bad recovery, but the symptoms of a permanent loss of vitality. No inference as to the future can be drawn from the functioning of a capitalist engine. The capitalist order con consists in the claim that before collapses, capitalism enters a stage of permanent crisis, only temporarily interrupted by short-lived chem chimerical recoveries. And capitalism's preoccupation with endless accumulation will result in a total ecological destruction and extinction foster 11. The continued pursuit of Keynes... Kane's convenient lie led to unintended consequences of, of accumulation without limits, namely global economic stagnation, financial crisis, and planetary ecological destruction. These perils are impossible to overlook. It is necessary than ever to espouse the truth that capitalism is a system that fails both the human social conditions and the wider natural environment on which it depends. The accumulation of capital is a catastrophe for living species. And capitalism is unsustainable and reforms only ensure the crash is worse. Madoff and Foster 10. The ecological crisis cannot be solved within the logic of the present system. This, the system of a world's capitalism is clearly unsustainable. Its quest for ne never-ending accumulation of capital leading to the production that must continually expand its agriculture and food system pollutes the environment, does not allow universal as access to to a sufficient quantity and quality of food, its search for technological magic bullets as a way of avoiding the growing social and ecological problems arising from its own operations, and the basis for the creation of a sustainable human development must arise from the system from within the system dominated by capital. These initiatives can become powerful enough to constitute the basis of a revolutionary new movement in society. It means making ec economic decisions through democratic processes occurring at a local, regional, and multi-regional levels. New forms of democ democracy will be needed. And the alternative is to vote negative. The only way to open up space for a new kind of activity beyond merely global capitalism with a human face is to renounce facile calls to direct action. Doing nothing is doing nothing is the only starting point away from capital. Sizek four. If today's post-politics is opportunistic pragmat pragmatism with no prin principles, then the predominant leftist reaction to it can be characterized as principled opportunism. One simply sticks to the old formula and then calls it principles. The inherent stupidity of the principled left is discernible from its standard criticism of any analysis which pro proposes a more complex picture of the situation, renouncing any simple prescriptions on how to act. One should affirm that the only way really to remain open to revolutionary opportunity is to renounce facile calls to direct action, which necessarily involves, involves us in an activity where things change so that the totality remains the same. If we succumb to the urge of direct doing something, engaging in the, in the anti-globalist str struggle helping the poor, we will undoubtedly contribute to the reproduction of the existing order. The only way to lay the foundations of, for a true, radical change is to withdraw from the compulsion to act to do nothing thus opening up the space for a different kind of activity. The task is is thoroughly to th rethink the leftist project, beyond the alternative of accommodation to the new circumstances and sticking with the old slogans. Now we're going on case. First, let's go on to their harms here. Uh, the, tagline on the, Shulu, the tagline on the Shulu 11 card uh, states that fertilizers lead to global warming. However, the card didn't have any actual warrants to support their claims here. The only relevant warrant states that the fact that nitrous oxide is the third most significant greenhouse gas, which then if we look at look at their Sanders 12 card, which is the second card there on the harms, all it said is that, is that this destroys the ozone layer, when the, all the ozone layer really does is is hold back the ultraviolet light from the sun, which has nothing to do with global warming and the temperature of the of the Earth. Now, also, the largest contributors to global warming are the millions of cars that are currently driving on the road and the burning of fossil fuels that, that we as a society are already doing in this capitalist regime. Also, there will be no extinction. The, reject this environmental alars, alarmism collided in Forbes 07. Apocalyptic stories about, the, about irreparable cap, catastrophic damage are blown up to illogical and ridiculous proportions. The alarmists identify a legitimate issue, take the possible consequences to an extreme, and advocate action on the basis of these extreme projections. Alarmism is given more weight than it deserves, as policymakers attempt to appease their constituency in the media. Environmental alarmism should be taken for what it is, a natural tendency for the public to latch onto the worst. Also, go, then go ahead and extend this argument over to their solvency, 
of their weak link to global warming. Because synthetic fertilizers are such small contributors to global warming, they can't actually sol they can't access their solvency. Because once they eliminate sol uh, synthetic fertilizers, they're not going to actually be able to solve for global warming because synthetic fertilizers never had anything to do with global warming in the first place. For all of these reasons, I urge a strong vote for the negative. Thank you. All right, first, um, I want to talk about your Cap K, capitalism critique, um, saying that capitalism is bad. But uh, do you currently have a laptop? I do. You do. Okay. And did you did you type your whole case off on that on that on the laptop? Or I did. Computer of your choice. Okay. So I'm curious to know because isn't it that capitalism really caused these for laptops to be affordable for individuals instead of having it so one uh, one person in particular could have it at the set price? The benefits of, of a capitalist regime actually producing a laptop is insignificant to the fact of, of how it is slowly destroying the human the human social condition on which it was built. Okay, well, but it's benefited our lives. It is not in a net in okay. a net net benefit sort of way. Capitalism has has done far more harms than the benefits it has produced. Okay. Uh, next, I want to talk about your fifty states on how your plan and how you want to do the fifty states. Mm -hmm. Now, does your plan also include Puerto Rico and Guam? No, it does not. It's only oh. the 50 contingent United States. Okay, so it does. It excludes the other territories in which is co considered the United property of the United States, and if you're born there, you're considered American citizens. So it's not covering those citizens exactly, correct? That is true. Okay. Huh. Now you also argued that federalism is uh, good, correct? That is true. Okay, and you're saying that how how is it that my plan is taken away from this? What you're doing is you're is you're is you are taking state powers away, and by taking it away, you, then you're giving it to the federal government and and slowly leeching away what the states can actually do. Okay. Now, how are the states going to be able to pay for all this? They're going to be being able to pay through this through fiat, normal means. They're going to be able to raise taxes and be able to reduce spending in other areas. So they're going to be able to raise taxes on individuals who have already had their taxes raised and are already suffering. This is the way the world works. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, um, now, how, how are you going to do this when states are already going bankrupt as well? Like I said, through normal means. We are already raising tax. If I could just take a little more time to answer the question. Um, it's, states it's, can, it's, it's as time, normally, sorry. they just raise the taxes. We do this. We're doing this in California right now. This does not affect any of, it, of its, the state's constituents. And then we can just reduce spending in other areas. Thank you. All right, uh, first I want to start off by thanking my opponent, and I want to thank the judge, and thank all the audience members here for making this all possible today. First, I'm going to, my roadmaps for today, I'm going to go on case, and then I'm going to move on to the count, their counter plan, then their dissad, and then their uh, capitalism critique. So uh, let's begin. The overview for global warming. First, extend enhanced in 2012. Human operations are the driving force behind the shifting climate, and our synthetic fertilizers have played a significant role in this shift. Extend Sanders 2012. The synthetic fertilizer is linked to a 20% increase in nitrous oxide alone, which doesn't take into account the emissions that are produced during the production of these fertilizers. As Shao 2011 explains, fertilizers are linked to global warming through the contamination of our biosphere and water eutrophication. And as my Tickle 2008 evidence shows, global warming will lead to our extinction. Now, I want to talk about our, my solvency. I, I access solvency for two reasons. First, extend the EPA empirically reduces chemicals card. Uh, the plan will greatly reduce the use of synthetic fertilizers. Then extend the Cruz 2004 card. Conventional farms produce almost 300% more greenhouse gases than the type of farms created through this bill. And, this, um, and sustainable farming reverses global warming trends, pulls back from the brink. Lynch 2011. Organic farming uh, generally has lower energy use than greenhouse gas and greenhouse gas emissions. Greenhouse gas emissions are con consistently lower, and the main reasons for are for better organic performance are the lack of synthetic uh, nitrogen fertilizers. Now I want to go off case and talk about their counter plan, uh, uh, federal on their federal the federalism, in that uh, transition to multipolarity is now. Brzezinski, uh, 2012. We now we live we now live in a world in which uh, in fact hegemony. Uh, Hegemony uh, by a single power is not attainable. The world is no longer uh, congenial into domination by a single power. The basic structural uh, structural weakness of America actually threatened our ability to uh, play a preeminent role. Uh, prolonging trans and pro prolonging transition risks global stability. Farley, 2012. As the gap between the United States and other great powers declines, the margin for error, error, error narrows. The shift from U.S. Uh, hegemony to multipolarity will change the nature of of those ins institutions. The great danger is that the United States will, in an effort to prolong and maintain 
its hege hegemony, hegemony, undertake policies that undermine the foundations of America's uh, Americans' place in the world. Turns the DA make war inevitable. Lane 2006. If the uh, if the U.S. fails to adopt a strategy on multipolarity, uh, it will have to fight to uphold its uh, primacy, which is potentially dangerous strategy. Attempting to sustain U.S. Uh, primacy will hasten its end, thus causing the United States to become empirically overstretched and involving it in unnecessary wars that will reduce its power. Uh, now I want to move on to the Cap K. Uh, to win the debate, the negative should have to prove the status quo or an alternative is a superior and competitive option to the plan. Both are necessary, only proving, and one is not sufficient for a negative ballot. This is key to a debate for a few reasons. For fairness, first off, we should get to leverage our 1AC advocacy against the possible harms we cause. Our advantages serve as justifications why the federal government should act, not that they will. Our ground is that the criticism should be linked to our proposal, not the status quo, making the affirmative responsible for defending the entirety of the status quo instead of just the, their policy proposal, while allowing the negative to reject the status quo divides ground unfairly. Now, this is a voter. If we win, that their interpretation decreases fairness and the ground, we have a warranted reason to win the debate. If we do not win the voter, then this is at least a reason to reject and any argument that does not prove the status quo or an alternative is superior and and add a competitive, uh, competitive with the case. Uh, number two is permutation. Endorse the plan and all non-competitive parts of the alternative. This guarantees solvency for the 1AC harms that swamps their generic link because it removes a huge amount of flawed system and ideology. Now, number three, permutation solves and the and the K alone leads to narcissism and co-option, uh, destroying any possibility of the alternative. I yield the rest of my time. All right, I'm just going to be going off case, going with my state's counter plan, going on federalism, then capitalism, and then I will be going on case. All right, so first off, onto the state's counter plan. There's, uh, this, throughout this entire debate, he just went ahead and dropped this entire, my entire flow here on states. So I just want to go ahead and extend all of this so we can actually see the fact that I've net benefits here. And this is why I should be winning the debate. First, I want to uh, extend my last row seven card to the fact that state action is, uh, it gets modeled due to the local innovation. The fact of this bottom up approach, then also uh, extend the, the Lin 11 card. When we have a bottoms up approach through policy innovation, specifically with a policy of this nature, it is going to solve for the problem much better. Mainly because the states, in fact, can solve for the problems much better than the federal government can. They know the problems there at the state level, and they can they can tweak all the the, the the program to actually solve for the individual problems at each each individual state in a much better way than the federal government actually can. The federal government would put on a blanket program that wouldn't actually solve for the problem. That is why the state's counter plan should be passed. Not only that, but I also Go ahead and so that's why immediately why you're going to vote for me here on the state's counter plan because he dropped this entire argument So I have this there's he has absolutely nothing on the flow here Even furthermore I have I have net benefits here with the federal on my federalism advantage my, my Unique the uniqueness of the fact that federalism is high now And then also the link one which again this is all conceded the fact that his plan is going to lead to a decrease in federalism Where we actually start to get some uh, some arguments on the flow here is that he says the fact that uh, that a decrease of hegemony is actually good. However, this is terrible. I want to read this card here. That a delegation of power with the states prevents war. Calabresi 95. Small state federalism is a big part of what keeps the peace in the United States. American-style federalism is a thriving and vital institutional arrangement, and it prevents violence and war. It prevents religious warfare, it prevents sectionalist warfare, and it prevents racial warfare. What he's trying, this entire argument here is saying the fact that currently we're on, we're on a shift to multipolarity, and that by decreasing hegemony, we're going to be able to prevent world war. However, this is completely untrue, as this, as this, as it shows right here, we, our federalism is in fact, is, is what actually prevents this federal war. Hegemony has classically been what prevents war. We can see this throughout the way. As the America, as Americans came into power, we were able to suppress many different world conflicts. That's what we're continuing to do here. What his plan does is he destroys this federalist model and go then extending my impact. He just he this immediately leads back in, into regional blocks, trade conflicts, and uh, and sectionalist uh, programs. That is why we cannot pass this plan. In fact, if we stay past the state's counter plan, we can avoid this the fe this federalism disadvantage and instead still encompass his his solvency of actually solving for for global warming. That is why we cannot pass this plan. Instead, we need to vote for my state's counter plan. Now we're going on to the uh, capitalism case. Uh, there's a whole lot of, once again, a, a really empty flow here because of the fact that he, 
he, he avoided a lot of my arguments here. I just want to go ahead and first extend my link is, the, is that capitalism has almost reached its end. And uh, uh, then, then extend my impacts card of the fact that capitalism is, is leading to total ecological destruction. What all it does is it continually just keeps trying to get more and more and more and totally... And ignores the environment. His this and furthermore, his plan does not actually solve for any of the any of these harms. All he does is that he's just going to keep prolonging the problem. He just keeps we just keep putting it for a little further down the road. Capitalism is going to continuously lead to these problems. The problems of global warming. If we do not solve for the problem of capitalism, we will never solve for the problem of global warming. And that is why we you cannot. That is an immediate vote for the negative. If you vote for the affirmative, you are voting for ecological destruction. He does not. Not only does he not solve for global warming, but he is not solving for capitalism, which is a much larger problem. Uh, now let's go ahead and go on 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 case. He never actually solves for global warming. Let's. I just want to go straight here onto solvency. The fact that that synthetic fertilizers is not is not linked to global warming. That's from my arguments of my. In my first constructive, he can solve for global warming. The fact that there is no inherent link between synthetic fertilizers and global warming, that means that he can't actually ever solve for his harms. That is why you, I urge a strong vote for the negative. Thank you. Right, one last time, I just want to briefly thank everyone in this room, judge, my opponent, the audience. Uh, first, I'm going to I'm going to talk about the counter plan. Uh, there are 50 states, and then I'm going to move on to the disadvantage of federalism. And then I'll, lastly, I uh, will uh, talk about the CAPK and then show how ours is more magnitude. So let's begin uh, with the whole 50 states counter plan. The federal government does a more efficient job, and that's why I really didn't need to address it really at all because of how the federal government does a more efficient job in the states. You can see this with the military, with anything. With anything, the federal government does a more efficient job because we could breach out and all. And I also mentioned the uh, cross-examination on how it does affect other territories in the United States, just such as Guam and Puerto Rico, while the 50 states plan does not. So instead, we want to target every American citizen and help every single individual to solve this global crisis. Next, I want to talk about their uh, federalism disadvantage on how that they say that federalism, that we're hurting federalism, we're not. And uh, I've, I've, I've articulated already throughout this whole entire debate that we are not hurting federalism at all whatsoever. But even if for some reason you do believe that we are, then I'm saying that we will we outweigh those. And I'll go into more detail on how we outweigh those in a little bit. In a, in a, in a few, but also I want to talk about their cap K, their capitalism critique. I want to articulate that they say that capitalism is terrible and that it's bad, but you know what? I, I completely disagree with this, and that's how the foundation of our country, and that's how the foundation of every innovation that starts through capitalism or so through a form of it. But I'm saying even if you do for some reason believe that capitalism is bad, I'm saying that ours outweighs our whole individual thing on uh, the whole entire world in global greenhouse and global warming outweighs this anti-capitalism critique and that capitalism is bad just like with the whole federalism if for some reason that you do believe that this that federal that we are hurting federalism which we are not that ours outweighs theirs because we won't have an we won't have earth we won't have human beings on this earth to talk about this to argue that federalism is good and that we're hurting it or someone else is hurting it when i'm clearly not we won't have individuals who argue that capitalism is bad when it's not we won't have all these opportunities because we won't exist if we don't pass my plan therefore i'm telling you right now to vote for my plan thank you